On the outskirts of Amsterdam, close to the former village of Buiksloot, you can find the last Dutch chalk mill. It was built in 1792 alongside the North Holland Canal on behalf of Elizabeth Admiral. That's why the chalk mill is still called Admiral. For over 225 years, the mill used to grind chalk and tuff, a volcanic stone for the production of brick mortar. Chalk used to be transported from France by ships while still soaked with water. The chalk had to be dried in big sheds next to the mill before it could be ground. After the Second World War, the mill became derelict but was restored again in 1967. In the year 2009, a drying shed was rebuilt at the back of the mill. The hatches of the shed can be opened wide so as to let the wind blow along the wet chalk. This drying process may last for weeks depending on the season and weather conditions. When dried, the lumps of chalk are transferred to the milling room where they are kept in open chalk boxes next to the tuff. Then comes the moment to start the milling process. The miller defines the direction of the wind and turns the wicks towards the wind. He unties the ropes and disconnects the lightning rod from the wick. Then he goes to the mill's tail to untie the ropes in order to wheel the body of the mill in the right direction. The total construction of the mill, body and wicks together weighs over 15 tons. The miller puts a trundling rope in the right direction, pulls it through the trundling eye and by turning the trundling wheel, he slowly turns the heavy mill body and wicks into the right direction. In the old days, the mill body turned on well-greased wooden beams that slid across each other. Trundling, in this case, means sliding. The chalk mill has iron wheels that run on a kind of rails. This mechanism is lighter and easier to handle. When the wicks are set to the right direction of the wind, the tail of the mill can be secured again. Then, if necessary, the sail cloths can be attached to the wicks. First of all, the miller places a wooden board to prolong the end of the wick. In this way, the mill will already catch wind more easily and will turn faster. Like all mills in the Netherlands, the wicks turn counterclockwise. Then the miller can set the sails. The sails are already attached to the wicks and have to be unrolled by the miller. To fasten them again, the miller has to climb into the wicks and attach the loops to the wicks. Then he can unroll the sailing cloth and tie the sails to the fencing. When the sail is fully attached to the first wick, the miller returns to the tail in order to handle the brake. By pulling the brake rope that is attached to a lever, the miller lifts a big beam in the top of the mill so as to enable the cogwheels to turn carefully. In this way, the next wick turns downward until the miller lowers the beam to stop the turning of the cogwheels and fastens the brake rope again to stop the mill. Now the miller can unroll a sail again and repeat this until all the sails are set. The miller adjusts the size and form of the sails to the amount of wind force that is needed. When the weather is less windy, he uses full sails, but sometimes half the size of the sails will do.
Of course, the extremities of the upper cast iron axis have to be greased to prevent the turning parts from becoming too hot. Then the miller releases the brake and the wicks of the mill can start turning. In the milling room, you can find the working heart of the mill, the edge runner mill with its two big curb stones. This process differs from a corn mill, where two milling stones move around horizontally and thus grind the corn in between into flour. In this case, the milling stones or curb stones are upright and turn vertically, thus in fact pulverizing the chalk and volcanic stones by using the full weight of the granite millstone, each weighing some three tons. It is obvious why the horizontal stone floor on which the millstones rest is called the death bed. Big sliding arms shove the chalk debris automatically under the big milling stones. When the chalk is finely ground, the miller can lower a sliding arm and shift the ground chalk powder or tuff to the sides, where it is collected in a box that is automatically emptied by the Jacob's ladder. In this way, the chalk is assembled in a turning sieve drum to obtain the finest chalk dust. All the bigger chalk particles are returned to the stones for a second round of milling. Nowadays, Chalk Mill Admiral even is the last wind-driven chalk mill in the world, a special mill with a special function.